welcome to Naresh IT. This is Kishore and today we are going to continue the OOPS features. In last session, we have discussed the OOPS features such as class. Okay? We have discussed the concept of class and how to declare the object. Today, I am going to start what is an object. Okay? When object is created, what happens? Everything. Okay? First of all, what is a, an object? Okay? In C++, the new concept is nothing but class. Actually, we have discussed that class is the extension of C structure. And here, whenever the class is created, we are able to store different types of variables and member functions inside the class. Now, how to define the class members? Means, uh, how to access the class members? To access the class members, first of all, we should have to declare an object from that class. Okay? Now, what is called an object and why we need the object means uh, to access the class members, we should have to define the object. Why? Because when class is declared, the memory is not allocated. Okay? Here the main point is when the class is declared, memory is not allocated. When objects are defined, then only memory is allocated because of classes are the logical representation of okay data that means logical logical means what they are not existed they are not physical okay for example i am going to declare a class like this now class student it is the student is the class name next uh, int id and character name now these are the data members. Now, here I have not used any access specifier. That is why by default all the members will become private members. Okay? Because of by default the class visibility label or access specifier is private. That is why here whenever the access specifier is not mentioned, automatically your compiler understands they are private members. Next, now to access these members, we have to go for member function. Now, public. In public area, I am going to write like this, void get. Next, void put. Now, the class is closed. And already you have discussed that we can define the member functions in two ways. One is inside the class, another one is outside the class. When inside the class it is defined, it will become inline member function and here you have to take care. What is the care means? In C++, we can define the member functions in two ways. One is inside the class, another one is outside the class. When the member function is defined inside the class, what happens? Now, it will expand it within inline. Okay? It is expanded as an inline function. Here, we have to take care about, uh, we do not have to write uh, looping statements or complex expressions inside the class. That is why here the important point is do not write the looping statements or complex expressions when the definition is conducted inside the class. Okay. Next, second method is what? Writing outside means defining the member function outside the class. When it is defined outside, it does not belong to or does not becomes to inline member function. That is why here we can define the member function in two ways. One is inside the class, another one is outside the class. For example, when it is inside the class, how it is going to be? Okay. Now, I am going to give you when the definition is inside, what happens? Suppose it is the get member function. I am going to take only one member function that is get. Here I am going to start like this. Now, see out, see out enter student id comma name next scene id name now function closed now it is called member function definition inside the class suppose when it is outside how it is going to be now say this i am going to define one more function here brackets close semicolon and class also closed here watch it it is a member function definition which is conducted inside the class. But here put is a another member function 
which is which is not uh, defined inside the class. That means I am going to define this function outside the class. When the member function is defined outside the class, the syntax is like this. First return type void class name. Class name is what? Student colon colon next one member function name put. The so here student is the class name and colon colon is called scope operator and it tells the put belongs to stu class. Okay. Here colon colon is called scope operator and the scope operator represents what? The function on its right side belongs to the class on its left side and now body C out id equal to id. Okay. Suppose here I am going to close like this. Next end l letter C out name equal to name. Now, first of all id is going to print here, letter name is going to print here. It is how to define a member function outside the class and inside the class. Next, now the class is created, data members are ready and member functions also ready. Now, the remaining topic is what? How to call the member functions or how to access the class members. Here, it is called class declaration and definition. Now, the point is how to access the class members. Whenever you are going to access the class members, first of all, we should have to declare the objects. Okay? Because of object is the class variable and when the object is declared, when the objects are defined, then only memory is allocated. For example, regularly we are using int a comma b comma c. Generally, a, b, c are called variables. Which kind of variables means they are integer kind of variables or integer type variables. Now, what happens when these variables are created? Okay, how much memory is allocated? Now, 6 bytes memory may allocated. And here one point is a, b, c are integers and here one more integer is there, but actually it does not occupy any memory because of it is the logical copy and these are the physical copies. That is why here total it needs 8 bytes, but here what happened? Only 6 bytes memory is allocated because of integer is used to create the physical copies. That is why integer is the logical copy, a, b, c are the physical copy. Now, in our example, int is the class and a, b, c are the objects. Okay? Here in our example, int is nothing but a class and a, b, c are the objects. According to this explanation, objects needs the memory, not the class. That is why class is a logical representation, objects are the physical representation. Okay? Now, what happens and how to define the object? Okay? Now, according to this, I am going to give the class objects creation. Say this, suppose it is the main function and class name is what? STU. Now, yes. Here, STU is the class name and S is the object. Now, what happens? In stack, it is a just assume stack. Here, it is the S object. Now, 2 bytes memory allocated for id and 20 bytes memory allocated for name. That is why this class object size is 22 bytes. Next, uh, here another two functions get suppose put. Now, these are the members of S object. That is why to call the get and put, we have to write s dot get and s dot put. It is how to access the members. That is why it is called nothing but uh, calling. Okay. Now, what happens? This get and put members are going to call. Okay. Now, when s dot get is called, program automatically goes to get. Get is nothing but this function. It is going to read the values for id and name. When put is called, program goes to put function it is going to print the id and name. That is why here 
the important point is to access the class members you should have to declare one object at least one object through that object we are able to access the class members it is how to define a class and object according to this okay according to this object means what now i am going to explain what is an object okay according to all these examples first definition of object is it is a class variable or it is a variable of type class it is one of the definition for object it is a variable of type class second one it is a an instance of a class object is also called it is an instance instance means what here copy instance means copy that's why object is also called it is a copy of a class next uh, third one it is the physical representation of a class okay here object is also called what it is the physical representation of a class just before we have discussed when class is declared memory not allocated when the objects are created then only memory that's why objects require the memory that's why it is the physical representation of a class once a class is declared we are able to declare any number of objects from that class for example in previous example i have given student class student class contains what id name now from the student class i want to declare the object s1 s2 s3 now these three are the objects now what happened three memory locations are created one is for s1 another one for s2 and another one for s3 and uh, all are having same data members id 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 and here name 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 here we can store the first student data here second student data here third student now it is nothing but uh, object oriented this one is called object that means each object allows to store the data separately that means each object contains one student data now this data is different from this data this data is different from this data nowadays everything is going on object oriented because of this that's why object oriented programming allows to manage the data in the form of uh, objects which is easy to understand okay to maintain the data that is nothing but object oriented that's why object is defined in different ways it is how to define the object next another oops feature is encapsulation now another important feature of oops is encapsulation now encapsulation is nothing but the process of binding the data members and member functions into a single unit called say this for example here we have declared class class contains what int id okay next name now to access this we are going to use void get and void put functions now watch here here id and name are the what data members and member functions now what happened class allows the concept of uh, binding the data members and member functions together into a single unit called class and this feature is called encapsulation okay this feature is called encapsulation that's why encapsulation is a process of defining different types of variables and functions into a single unit called class that is nothing but encapsulation okay it is nothing but encapsulation feature in next session we are going to continue the remaining oops features thank you for watching Thank you.